Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today I have a bit of a book haul to share with you. I have, where have I gotten these? I went to a library book sale was where I started. Um, we visited a bookstore while we took a little weekend getaway. Um, I have a couple arcs in here. It's a good variety, good variety. And I'm excited for so many of them. So let's get started. All right, so the first few I want to talk about, I picked up at a bookstore. Um, we did a little family weekend getaway and there was a bookstore in where we stopped at a mall, did some shopping and I wasn't gonna pass it up. So we all went in and checked it out. Um, I picked up Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This is, I've been seeing this pretty much everywhere, just about everywhere. Um, I'm hearing that it has um, Love and Other Words vibes to it. I, that's all I know about it. Um, it says six summers to fall in love, one moment to fall apart, and a weekend to get it right. So I'm hoping there's a little path. Oh yeah, there's dual timelines. We have now and then in the past. Yeah, 14 years ago or whatever. So I'm hoping to get this in before the end of summer. I wouldn't mind getting this in before the end of summer, but we'll see. But I'm excited for this one. Um, I also picked up um, the Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. This is going to be a book club pick for one of my book clubs. I don't remember which one. It might be the work one. So very interesting premise. Um, so it seems like any other day you wake up, pour coffee, you head out, go with your routine. But today when you open your front door waiting for you is a small wooden box. The box holds your fate, the exact number of years that you will live. What do you do? Do you want to know? Do you not want to know? What are you going to do with that information? This kind of follows, I think, six different people, eight different people that are given that information. And so it alternates between those perspectives. So I've heard really good things about this. I've heard it will wreck me and I'm here for it. Yeah, that's going to be a good book club one, I think. The next book that I picked up from that bookstore is Notes on Your Sudden Disappearance by Allison Espich. This was on one of my videos, like most anticipated videos, so it's released not that long ago. We have two main characters. We have Sally and we have Billy. So Sally has been mystified by things her older sister has done. She seems to have been born knowing this thing. Kathy has everything. It's all great. Um, then there's Billy Barnes, who's a rising senior star of the basketball team works at the town pool, like kind of everybody idolizes him. The girls are fascinated by him ever since he jumped off the roof in elementary school, but Billy's never shown much interest in them until the summer before Sally goes into eighth grade. Their mutual infatuation with Billy, Kathy and Sally, um, the sisters, is, is, Sally spends much of her summer at the pool where Billy is watching him from the sidelines. Um, and then tragedy strikes, leaving Sally's life forever intertwined with Billy. Something is happening. It takes place in the early 90s, super stoked about that, and spans two decades of shared history and misconnections. So, beyond excited. I think the 90s nostalgia, it, I hope it's on point. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, super excited that I got a couple of arcs in the mail. First one, I cannot wait to read this in October. Calypso Corpses and Cooking, it is a, Cozy Mystery by Raquel Reyes. Um, I just, it just gives me vibes. It's Halloween-ish. There is a cooking show involved and this person who kind of hosts the cooking show wakes up to find a corpse in her front yard, right by the uh, fake tombstone that she has. So we go from there trying to figure it out. I'm excited for it. My aunt actually almost took it from me and I'm like, no, I have to feel yeah, super excited for this one. Huge shout outs to um, Kate Publicity for getting in touch with me and letting me read this ahead of time. So when does this come out even? I should probably know that information. Until November of this year. So then the other one I got from St. Martin's Press is An Affair of Spies by Ronald Balson. This is the same author as when we were Once We Were Brothers, which I also have on my cart, I think, to read. Um, so Berlin, 1920s, the son of a housemaker and a theoretical physicist, his name's Nathan. Um, he has quite the idyllic childhood and soon marred by increasing levels of bigotry against his family and the rest of the Jewish community. After his uncle's arrested, he leaves Germany and he moves to New York City with only his mother's wedding ring to sell for survival. 
While attending a course in Columbia in 1941, Nathan notices a recruitment poster at a university and decides to enlist in the military and help fight the Nazi regime. To his surprise, he's selected for a special assignment. He is trained as a spy. And at that point, I'm like, and give me this book, please. So, a Jewish spy. Yes. Yes, yes. So, excited to read this one. This one comes out um, in September. All right, a couple other books I randomly picked up. I know I pre-ordered this one. We have The Retreat by Sarah Pierce. Um, she wrote The Sar Sanatorium, right? Now I'm going to confuse myself. I'm pretty sure she wrote The Sanatorium. Yes, she did. Um, so this one is the idyllic wellness retreat. Everyone wants to go there. It's on an island off the English coast. It, it promises rest, relaxation. It's known as Reaper's Rock to the locals though and has a very dark past so anybody going there doesn't realize the dark past that it has it used to be a playground of a serial killer and rumored to be cursed so when people get there they find out they cannot stay the young woman's found dead and seems like a tragic fall but they learn that it may not be what it appears so creepy place stuff happening i'm here for it i'm here for it that would be a good October read too. Next book I wanna talk about is The Woman with Two Shadows by Sarah James. So we have our main character, Lillian. She hasn't heard from her identical twin sister, Eleanor, ever since she took a job at a army base in Tennessee. Very classified job, very secretive. And she gets a very random phone call basically telling her that her twin sister is missing. So Lillian gets on a train, leaves New York, heads towards this Oak Ridge city to clear up the matter. And she realizes the only way she's going to get in to Oak Ridge is to assume Eleanor's identity. So she does to try to figure out what happened to Eleanor. I'm here for that. Like, it sounds, oh, there's, there's, it's, it's hopefully creepy is what I'm hoping for. So picked, I think this one was sent to me. I shouldn't say that. I got that one. Um, picked this one up off of Pango because you know I had Pango bucks and decided to use them. Um, Locked Door by Frida McFadden. A friend of mine in my book club has read this and says it's fantastic. It looks quite short. I mean, oh, this is it doesn't have page. How do oh, they're on the inside? Yeah, just over 300 pages. It says some doors are locked for a reason. I, I, I have I don't know. I think it has it has something to do with an uh, eleven year old daughter who has no idea her father is a serial killer. So we'll see what happens. But I'm here for that one. And then um, Renee Ryan is a author, and she lives in Wisconsin. I'm pretty positive. Um, I'm going to be partnering with her and a couple of other people in September for a little project, and she offered to send me her latest. Um, an arc of her latest book. So she's got a historical fiction called The Secret Society of Salzburg. Beyond excited. It says Austri Austrian opera singer, British typist, a daring plan in war-torn Europe. London, 1933. I am here for it. And then I saw that it's inspired by true events and I'm all over it. So very, very excited to give this a whirl. Um, really want to need to and want to pick this up soon. So a huge thank you to Renee for sending this to me. And then we have the variety of books I picked up at the library book sale that I went to. A friend of mine reached out to me on a random day and she's like, hey, you want to go to this library book sale with me? And I'm like, uh, yeah, pick me up. Let's go. So I don't know. I spent a few bucks, got a stack of them, um, probably another stackish about the same size that I have for book exchange possibilities, but I love me a good library book sale. So I did pick up... Um, Ellen Hildebrand's 28 Supper Summers. I have never read a book by her. I'm hearing people who seem to like similar books to me have been liking her books for quite some time. And so for all of like 50 cents, I picked it up. We'll see. We'll see. That might wait till next summer though. All right, next ones I grabbed. I grabbed a couple by the same author. Um, so we have What You Want to See and The Last Place You Look. Um, I looked these up on Goodreads. They had decent ratings. Uh, this one says, a head-on collision between an um, allegedly closed case and a troubled investigator who doesn't know when to quit. Um, this one doesn't have a little blurb. 
and I don't want to read too much into it because I've really found like sometimes the synopsis can spoil things and I just don't want to know about these two. So um, we're going to give it a uh, try. So Kristen LaBianca wrote both of them. I don't, I've never read anything by her. So if you have and you have opinions, let, let me know. I'd like to know. Um, also picked up Twilight Children by Tori Hayden. Same author as One Child, which I did read and I enjoyed that one. Really enjoyed that one. So uh, we have nine-year-old Cassandra. She was kidnapped by her father and found starving, dirty, picking through garbage cans and is a child prone to long silences and erratic, violent behavior. I wonder why. Uh, we have four-year-old Drake will speak only in private to his mother while his tough, unbending grandfather's demands for an immediate cure threatens to cause irrepar irreparable harm. Though she has never worked with adults, Hayden agrees to help uh, fearful and silent 82-year-old massive stroke victim, victim Gerda, discovering in the process that a treatment success could prove nearly as heartbreaking as, it limits, as its limitations. So this book follows these three characters and what they go through. So it just it's three voices no one heard until someone listened. So I'm here for that. All right. Also picked up a couple of books by Lisa Wingate, who um, I've enjoyed reading. I've read um, Before We Were Yours, obviously, is what's got me hooked. I feel like I read another one. But I found these two on the shelves. Um, the one is Over the Moon at the Big Lizard Diner, which I just read shoot the moon by Billy Lutz, which was kind of takes place at a diner. And I, God, I really liked that vibe. So picked that one up and then I picked up tending roses. They don't have the best ratings on Goodreads, but I really want to give Lisa Wingate a little bit more. I, I want to get into more of her backlist. So picked those two up. Um, then I picked this one up. I almost put it back and then I read the synopsis. It's called It Sleeps in Me by Kathleen O'Neill um, Gear. So we have Sora. She is a young high chiefess of the Black Falcon Nation. For many winters, her heart belonged to her husband, Flint, a warrior from a neighboring clan. Flint truly loved Sora and together they explored the world of passion and love. But Flint was very jealous and on more than one occasion beat men to death for merely casting a glance at Sora. Unable to live in with this murderous rage, Flint packed up his things and moved back to his mother's clan, divorcing her and leaving her forever. Remarried and fully devoted to her duties, duties as high chiefess, Sora tries to bury her memories of Flint, but she's forcibly reminded of her lost love when at the eve of war with a neighboring nation, she's visited by Skinner, an old friend of Flint. He brings word of Flint's death, but Sora notices something strange about Skinner. It says, if he carries a part of Flint's soul with him. And that's where I was like, ooh, this is interesting. When he starts revealing secrets that only Flint would know and arousing her passion in ways only Flint had, Sora needs to figure out if this is merely the clever witchcraft of enemies who want to seize her power and destroy her nation or the spirit of her one and only true love. And I was like, yeah, I could, I could get into that. That sounds intriguing. For a quarter, picked it up. Um, picked up Lost and Found by Jacqueline Sheehan. Uh, it is a tale of love, loss, and moving on with the help of a not-so-little dog. I love me some dog books right now. And the last one I grabbed is The Last Voyage of Poe Blythe by Ellie Condi. This was, um, I think it's YA fantasy. I did read the first few chapters of this for, did I do a try chapter? I might have done a try a chapter. So it's kind of been on my mind ever since then. Uh, so Paul Blythe, 17 year old captain of a, the outpost last mining ship wants far more than gold. They, as they tear from the serpentine river, she wants revenge. So she's out to, you know, make a point. So picked that one up as well. So that is my, that's a little book haul. And I'm going to give you a fair warning. There's another book haul coming um, over this past weekend. Myself, Sarah, and Amanda all did a BookTube Besties virtual reading retreat where we had, I don't know, like 50 of our most amazing bookish besties join us for 24 hours of reading and book talk and recommendations. And I maybe filled up an entire book outlet court cart and hit submit. And so those are coming. So that's going to be another book haul. And hopefully after that, we uh, take a little break because 
I need to slow down just a bit. Anyways, that's all I have for today. If you have any comments or thoughts about what I have talked about and that you think I should pick up sooner rather than later, leave them below. Otherwise, subscribe, like, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye.